just the last few people uh, have joined. Uh, a kind thank you to all those who confirmed the uh, audio quality. I hope everything's okay. Um, so let's get started. Um, this webinar is on the integration of RCC and steel structures uh, with, um, with SIPE. Now, uh, when we talk about the integration uh, with RCC and steel structures, what we're basically talking about um, with regard to our particular solutions is how uh, our two uh, main structural softwares uh, uh, communicate with one another. And those two softwares are SIPCAD for our um, RCC structures, so our reinforced concrete structures, and SIP3D for our steel structures. Um, so basically what we're going to go through today, I'm going to just go through a little bit about the, the workflow and how we sort of go through. I like to sort of start with that and um, have a look at a few example projects. And then we're going to dive into our, uh, our solution and we're going to create a simple structure. And I'm going to demonstrate how um, this integration takes place with our, uh, with our software. Now, um, what we can do initially is um, have a look at this uh, particular diagram. This diagram um, demonstrates well the workflow, how it, how it works, uh, because I know there's some of you who might be joining. Uh, this might be your first webinar. Uh, you might not know how, uh, how we work, so I'd like to um, demonstrate it uh, just, just briefly. Now, I like to use this diagram. Why? Uh, it basically just demonstrates the sort of the levels of um, uh, interoperability we have with our software. So initially we start off with a physical 3D model. Now, this physical 3D model can be, of course, uh, created using our IFC builder software. Now it's free to use, and I'm gonna show you how to, where to download that um, on the BIM Service Center. Um, and basically uh, you can bring in any other architectural model from any other program, and you can utilize our, our plugins and our applications to bring in your, uh, your architectural model into our uh, into our native IFC format. Now I'm talking about Revit, Archicad, um, All Plan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we have the um, uh, we have the uh, the infrastructure to bring in those uh, to bring in those models into our into our shared information, which is what I'm going to touch on now. Now this shared information, basically, what it is is it's the BIM Server Center. So this is the the place where uh, you can download um, different applications. You can store uh, all your projects on here. You can um, uh, collaborate with uh, different people on different models. Again, so I can come back here and you can see those different models are all here. Um, so in this, uh, in today's uh, webinar, we're going to be looking at our structural models. So uh, everything that's got to do with uh, the structural members uh, of, our, uh, of our project. Now, the list goes on. We have HVAC, we have energy solutions, um, uh, and yeah, basically uh, all sort of facets when it comes um, in regards to a, a real life construction project. We have the infrastructure and the solutions to model those um, uh, to model those aspects of that building. Now you can come over here and see, and I can demonstrate it quite well using an example project. This is the Crown Halls project. Um, uh, this is a project in the UK, I, I believe, and we've replicated it into our um, into our uh, native uh, environment. You can see here that my uh, that my structural model is enabled. So you can see here the, um, the things we're going to be looking at a bit later. So our our beams, columns, our foundation elements, etc. But if I come over here, you can see all the different models that are uh, attributed to this project. Now I can turn off that structural model and turn on my architectural model. And we can just wait for this to load. And you can see that that architectural model, uh, I can view in, um, uh, in 3D, all on the internet. So I, I, I haven't opened up application, nothing's happened. I can, of course, um, model, uh, 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 have a look at the extra models. So I can make this transparent. And you can see here a list of all the different models that are associated with this project. So we have the furniture, office furniture, water equipment. I can have a look. So let's have a look at our uh, furniture. You know, of course, this isn't what I'm just trying to do is demonstrate uh, the capabilities here. So we have um, the furniture model. Uh, bear with my internet. Usually when I'm running the uh, go-to webinar and also on uh, any other thing, uh, it's sort of uh, the go-to webinar does take up a lot of the, um, I'm not exactly too sure the, uh, the technical words, but it takes up a lot of the internet. Um, so our plumbing models as well, we can have a look at that. Water systems, our lows for our energy calculations, et cetera, et cetera. So 
what I'm demonstrating here is that our solutions work with uh, one another and it's all, um, it, and at the end of the day, it's situated all on the um, BIM Service Center. Now, of course, with these specialized tools, there are technical documents that can be, uh, that can be generated. Now, these are drawings, cost estimates, et cetera. And the nifty tool here is that these technical documents can all be obtained from the BIM Service Center. So I'm coming over here to files, and all the files attributed to this project, I can uh, I can view, and I can also download from the actual BIM Service Center. So I don't need any applications to open up um, different file formats, et cetera, et cetera. It's all um, uh, just at a click of a button. Now, that's what I wanted to demonstrate for the files aspect. You can see here how this sort of works. We've started off with a, uh, with a architectural model, and we brought it into our uh, into our shared information, and then once it's a part of that shared information, and then in that IFC format, then all our specialized tools are able to understand the parameters of that architectural model, and then we can build, and then we can build on top of that. So it's a sort of um, it's, it's 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 really great in a sense that prior to um, this sort of workflow, it was quite difficult to sort of um, get in touch with different uh, professionals that work that work on different models, etc., and try and get, uh, of course, the schematic drawings, etc., all the different uh, files together. Here, everything's in one-stop shop. We're here at the BIM Service Center, and we can um, and we can obtain all these different models and drawings, the technical documents that come with those models. So um, that's sort of what I wanted to go through uh, in regards to um the BIM service center. Now if you guys want to have a look, um, we can come over here. If you guys want to uh, create an account, it's quite easy to create an account. Just come over to BIM server.center. Um, it'll ask you for your login. Just click up sign up. Uh, you'll get a confirmation email and confirm your email and you guys have access to all these pro uh, all these applications that you can download. Now of course the IFC builder is free. This is a sort of thing that we'd like to offer. Um, uh, to our users to play around with. And then of course, once we go into these extended applications like the ones we're gonna be using today, um, of course we can download those too. Of course, what I mentioned prior was these plugins. So these are the two plugins that we use. Uh, for the Revit plugin, we have this one, our OpenBIM Revit plugin. And then of course, for all our other um, solutions, uh, all our other uh, points of origin for our architectural models, we use our IFC uploader. So let's uh, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to show you guys a few uh, a few projects at the end of the uh, webinar. Now, in regards to questions, I'm going to be taking questions um, through the uh, uh, throughout the webinar, um, and also, uh, well, if they're if they're easy to uh, respond, I will respond instantaneously. But if not, we'll leave them to the end. Don't worry. Um, I will try my best to get to uh, all your questions. Um, and if not, uh, we will uh, do something to get your questions addressed, of course. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's get started. I'm going to open up Soft 3D right now. Now I can come over here. I should have it. Now our Site 3D again is um, for the um, for the dimensioning of uh, steel structures. So what I want to do right now is I want to uh, create a, uh, a 3D structure and then uh, we can head over to SIPCAD and then I'm going to show you guys the interoperability between both programs and how we can, uh, how we can utilize uh, the, the, uh, the powerful um, uh, specifications from our steel structures and then bring those over to our uh, concrete, <coughs> our reinforced concrete structures. So let's create a new project. I'm going to call this the webinar example. Um, I have the option to create an empty project or an automatic introduction of an IFC. I'm going to create an empty project. 
And here we have all our different codes. So you can see, uh, I've touched on this in previous webinars, but it's probably worth just uh, having a look. Uh, we have all these different technical codes that we brought into our um, uh, that we brought into our uh, our solutions. So you can see here from South America to Europe to all our international uh, codes as well. Uh, we can accept. That's fine. Uh, let's just leave it. Um, and we can finish now and start. Now, what I'm going to do is create a, a roof structure, a steel roof structure um, right now. So uh, what we can do here is I'm going to create some nodes. So let's come over here to nodes, a new node. I'm going to select this here. And you can see here that the program is so um, easy to use when we're looking at um, uh, putting the pieces together for our metallic structures. So you can see if I come over here to my uh, horizontal, let's have a look. This was... Uh, let's say this is five meters. Let's say longitudinally it was eight meters. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let's cancel that. So I've got a five meter structure here. Let's go up by. So you can see here, yeah, upon introducing that third node, that the program already lines it up for me, and I can uh, select my fourth node quite easily. I don't have to come over here and then do the same thing, which is uh, quite nifty. So let's have a look. This was eight meters. Oh, this is five meters, so let's split it up with one meter. So right now we're just dealing with um, our uh, steel structures. So uh, upon doing that, I can create a halfway point. And we can come over here to yeah. Okay, so uh, what we can do now is uh, connect these using some bars. So come over here to bars, to new. Now, of course, if you don't uh, quite understand how to use the software, that's fine. Um, how I would um, suggest is actually uh, playing around with it a little bit and finding uh, uh, finding a, a just it it it, it basically comes um, intuitively. So if you have a look at the examples we have, there's also online resources to learn how to use the programs. We have our customer support team. The the resources are there to um, uh, to aid you, but it's not that. Uh, the program is difficult to use. It's quite an easy uh, program and easy to use um, uh, interfaces that we have. So that's fine. We can come over here. Now, um, let's look at this. So we can go. Now, of course, this is a um, very quick, uh, uh, quick dimensioning. That's fine because we are restricted uh, with time. I didn't quite get it. Just ensuring that it's in the middle. Perfect. Now let's uh, right click. Let's up over here. Okay, so that's our little um, our little roof structure that we're going to make. Now, what I can do, of course, I can hold down the shift key and uh, using the uh, scroll button, uh, get a better 3D view when I'm fixed at a point and I can move around. Uh, so this is a quite nifty trick. Let's have a look, just to consult. Yeah, that's fine. Now, what I want to do is um, now what I'm so I'm just going to connect it. Um, uh, I'm going to connect it together. So let's uh, let's come over here to tools, uh, copy elements, nodes and bars. Select all these. Right click. Select our origin point. So just over here. And I'm going to move across this line, uh, and it will be uh, a two meter spacings. Oh no, two meter spacings.
Oh, not that one. Go back. It was yes. Over here. Okay, perfect. Yeah, right. Clicking to submit those changes, and I can uh, have a look. I can come over here to Tools, 3D View, and view the complete structure. So that 3D view, we can consult the different changes we've made. I'm going to connect it up now. So come over here to mode. Ooh, just sort of get these center points. That's eight meters, yes. So you can see here in no time, um, we can actually create a simple structure. Let's flip around. Perfect. Now right click. We come over here to again to consult the 3D view. And you can see as such, we've created this steel structure in Site 3D. Now, um, now of course, uh, I'm going to show you guys later on when we go into uh, Site CAD, there is some, uh, we do have some uh, uh, practicality when we're looking at uh, steel structures in Site CAD. But of course, for our more um, meticulous, uh, uh, complicated structures, of course, the Site 3D and also our other programs can be used as well, uh, such as the portal frame generator. I could have done this in portal frame uh, generator as well. Uh, now, uh, but that's fine. I've done it in Site uh, 3D. That's, that's that's totally cool. Now, let's save this project. Um, come over here. Now, what I'm going to do is open up Site 3D now, and I'm going to show you guys how we can um, make these uh, two, um, two models connect uh, within SideCAD. So I'm going to, uh, sorry, I didn't say this. Uh, should get a function. Let's open up SideCAD now. It just takes some time because I'm using an electronic uh, license. Sometimes it uh, it takes some time as well as the, the internet, as I mentioned prior. So just bear with me, guys. I, I apologize for that. So let's create a new one. Uh, webinar. And accept this. Uh, the program asked me if I want to import a BIM model. I don't have one for this uh, webinar, so I'm going to click no. Now. Okay, so this is where the first option um, in terms of interoperability, inter interoperability with our programs comes. Now you can see here I have the option to create a new project. Now of course I can create an empty project, but the second option here is quite um, is is what we're looking for. You can see that I'm able to import a job from Sub 3D. Now, um, now this uh, it also sort of depends on the timing of your work whether you will make your um, you'll make your steel structure first or your um, uh, or, or if they're worked, if they're working alongside, you can of course do that as well. So import your 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 steel model, uh, your steel structure into um, a new project. But what we're going to do, just for the sake of this demonstration, is create an empty project. I'll come over here to empty. Um, now, of course, we have the same options again. So in terms of those general data, so our codes, our specifications, all our loads, you can see here. I'm able here to introduce my wind seismic. And fire resistance codes. Let's accept. Our limit states is fine. And here we have a uh, our, our our blank uh, our blank screen uh, with a totally empty project. So let's get started. I'm going to introduce some floor levels. So maybe the floors. Let's introduce some new floors. I'm going to introduce two. 
uh, with heights of three meters alike, and we'll leave the lows as well. Oh, that's the latest one. So, our live, uh, our live and dead loads is one, um, one ton per meter squared. Yes, that's fine. Perfect. So, I'm coming over here now to introduce my columns. You can see here that I'm in my column definitions tab. Basically, with our site CAD, uh, we will progress um, uh, alongside this tab. So, from column definition to beam definition, and then once we go into our analysis, looking at our contour maps to form shape and our results for our beams. Um, so, let's, uh, let's uh, what we're going to do, insert some columns. So, coming over here, we have the option to create a new column. Now, um, you can see here, this is the um, column editor. I'm able to select the uh, initial and final floors for our groups. Uh, I can introduce those external, fix, uh, uh, external uh, fixities as well. Um, and of course, all our different coefficients that I can uh, manipulate here prior to inserting the column. So prior to analysis, I can, of course, um, play around with these. Let's uh, let's change it. Let's change this to 45, just to give us some extra space, some extra breathing room, <coughs> and uh, accept. So I'm going to create one in the middle. There's going to be one at five meters to the right, and at two meter intervals. Oh, the two meter intervals north face. Perfect. And now I can, of course, just connect the uh, opposite columns as well. Perfect. So uh, let's have a look. Upon uh, upon inspection, you can see here I've created. Um, a total of 10 columns uh, using the column definitions tab. Now we can move over to the beam definitions. Now, of course, I'm not doing everything that I'm supposed to when we're looking at a real life structure because obviously uh, we don't have time. So uh, just a base structure. We'll come over here uh, to our foundations level. We can amend our, uh, our foundations. So come over here to foundation elements and then select a basic foundation structure. As such, I'm going to do some. I'm going to uh, create some tie bands as well, and I'll be a mixture of both strap and tie. Now you can see all these different tie beams and our strap beams. They come from the selected code that I've uh, that I've introduced. Now you might be asking, what if I have my own specifications? Those can all be edited uh, without. Uh, 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 with our beam options uh, as well. So you don't have to select from all the different uh, ones here. You can, of course, uh, create your own uh, as well. So basically the sort of libraries you can create and basically make the program uh, personalized to yourself. So uh, we can have a look at something else later where we can actually utilize our, uh, uh, utilize our, our uh, our local folder to store all our different specifications and then be able to obtain those later on so that you save time. So instead of, um, so of course, if you're dealing with um, similar structures, you know, when you're dealing with uh, similar structures, to, uh, similar members, um, being able to um, store those members and those specifications in one place and be, uh, and be able to use them at a later time is quite powerful. So let's accept. Oh. There is a problem, so specifications. I didn't place that in the center. Okay, perfect. So right away. Beautiful. So uh, strap and tie beams. And as such, 
Now, I've done this manually. I've, I've, I've defined this manually, but what I want to show is a, is a, is a, great, um, a great feature we have here is the, the option to design. So if I click this here, design, you can see here that the program will design our foundation elements uh, for me uh, in regards to all the loads that it's had prior. Now, we can do that later on. You can do that prior. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go up a level. Let's introduce our, uh, our drop beams. Let's come over here to beams. That's fine. What I'm doing is just demonstrating. Now I could have introduced a continuous beam, but that's fine. Just for um, uh, purposes, let's introduce a slab just while we're at it here. Let's say we'll do yeah, 20. I'll define this beam. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So now I've um, defined my beams. Uh, in my structure, let's create some. Um, let's just open up these panels, panels here. That's fine. Oh. Okay, perfect. So let's console our 3D view now. And you can see here the structure I've created. So just a simple structure. Um, by no means um, uh, uh, representative of any real life structure, but that's fine. Let's uh, let's let's exit now. Okay, so this is where uh, uh, we're going to take a turn, and we're going to now uh, bridge these two models together. Um, so we have our, our reinforced concrete structure, and then we have our steel structure. So this can be done only inside CAD. So we can't go the other way around inside three D. Bring in a concrete. No. The Sidecat is the uh, is the program that takes the bulk uh, of the work and brings it in. So that's fine. We can come over here to our three D structures uh, button. So let's uh, let's let's go through this now. There's two options here. So uh, which I mentioned um, at the start of the webinar. The first option is to create the job inside three D. Now that Site three D structure, um, of course, all the all the loads and uh, Etc. get generated in that site 3D. Now we can of course create a new structure, and this would allow us to actually create a steel structure within site CAD um, on this structure. But of course, we can also import the job from site 3D, and that was the option we had prior uh, uh, prior to starting the project. So I'm coming here to import job from site 3D, and you can see here the webinar example that I have. Ah, okay, right. So I've 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 made a simple mistake. That's fine. Let's uh, let's oh, no, let's uh, save. Let's exit. That's fine. I've just uh, I just didn't um, define any external fixities uh, 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 to the um, the three D um, metallic structure. Just bear with me, guys. The, um, the sort of internet takes a while to connect to the server and uh, open up because, of course, the uh, go-to webinar takes a bulk of the uh, bandwidth, I think. Yeah. So this is our structure. What I'm going to do is just come over here to node, uh, external fixities, and create all these as fixed connections. Now save, exit, yes, open up again, soft CAD, and we should be able to import it.
that webinar. Yep, perfect. Now, of course, again, coming over to integrated 3D structures here, import job from site 3D, the webinar example. And you can see here that um, that particular um, model is shaded in blue, and I'm now uh, asked to introduce the position of the integrated 3D structure. Now, if you don't understand what the program's asking you to do, Always look at the bottom left here. It says, introduce the position of the integrated structure. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm selected on the uh, first uh, bottom left-hand node. I come over here and select the, um, the positioning. So, left-clicking. And you can see here, the program uh, shows me uh, uh, the positioning. Now, what I've done, as you guys, uh, some of you may have noticed, I've just positioned the frame uh, on the foundation level. Let's, uh, let's undo that. Import the job, but what I need to do is go up to the top floor, selecting my floor levels here, and again those beams. Import job from site 3D. That webinar example, and now I should be able to have a look at that. At that, at that, at that now, okay, so now we've brought in our uh, our 3D structure. Let's consult the uh, the 3D view. And we'll be able to see that um, the sort of connectedness uh, of these uh, of these structures uh, can be viewed in 3D quite nicely. So you can see here all my beams connected um, as such. Now, um, the second thing that I want to touch on is, of course, the ability to edit uh, our 3D structures within SiteCAD. So you can come over here and have a look. We can, of course, create a new structure, but I can, of course, edit the structure too. Upon selecting uh, the particular 3D structure to edit, a, a, a window will open um, uh, of site 3D. So you can see here, upon opening this window, I'm now brought into site 3D. So I'm brought into um, how we uh, initially, where we started off, and I can make some changes here as well. Now, um, of course, um, I, can, I can make as many changes as I want here. Um, and that, and these changes will be saved to this particular um, uh, 3D structure that I have. Um, and of course, upon these changes uh, being made, uh, the analysis can also be done here. So I can also uh, analyze this isolated structure, get my forces, and then um, use those to transcribe into my, uh, my uh, RCC structure. So let's exit here. Uh, that was basically uh, what I wanted to demonstrate in terms of editing the structure here as well. So um, I can, of course, uh, view all the different integrated 3D structures here. I can create um, uh, new connections if I wanted to. So I can come over here to new connections and uh, select uh, a, a positioning within my um, uh, within my steel structure and create a new uh, a, a new connection. Um, I can align the structure, rotate it. Copy, move, delete, etc. Now let's um, let's uh, let's leave here. I can of course introduce elevation changes. So basically, what's uh, what I'm demonstrating now is that we can have uh, a different way of bringing in that 3D structure into SiteCAD uh, quite nicely. So uh, let's uh, let's now create a new structure in SiteCAD and see how we would uh, and how we would do that. I'm going to come down to the um, the first floor. You can see here this is my um, my structure. I have the option again by selecting the integrated 3D structures. I select by, uh, to create a new structure. Now let's create this as bar, random bar. I can accept this change. So now the program asks me introduce the connections for the new structure. Press the right mouse button to view the available options. So let's create a bar, a random bar. I can select the positioning of the origin. Let's do it from let's put it here to the first point. I can right click now and I have a few options. I can validate the connections and make that uh, just, uh, well, I won't be able to because it's just one point, but I can validate the connection. I can change the height difference. I can change group and I can delete the last connection. Let's, uh, let's change group. 
Let's go up to the top level. I'm going to now select a different position on the opposite side uh, of, the, uh, 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 of, of the structure. And this is just for demonstration purposes, nothing uh, uh, that I'm trying to actually get across. I can now right click and validate the connections. Now the program knows, okay, that uh, I've introduced two connections on my RCC structure and I've validated them. So two points that I want to connect now uh, by, some, by some way uh, in a 3D uh, steel structure. So I can validate connections. And you can see here now, the site, uh, site 3D will open and I have now exactly two nodes at those particular spaces and I'm now able to uh, make the appropriate changes that I want to. So I can create a bar. Let's create a bar from here all the way uh, to the uh, adjacent node. And you can see as such, let's, uh, let's exit. And now upon, uh, upon, going into, uh, upon selecting our 3D view, you can see that that bar has now been added. Uh, in the structure. So I started on my first floor, I changed groups, I went up to the, the, the top floor and I introduced a diagonal bar uh, as such. So now you can sort of understand the sort of potential that we have here. You can, um, of course, now, now of course, um, when we're dealing with more complicated structures, uh, we will use SiteCAD, uh, sorry, Site3D and its full, um, and its full uh, power. Uh, by creating these difficult structures and also looking at the wind loads as well and seismic loads. But then, of course, when we're dealing with these simple add-ons, we can, of course, um, uh, consult these uh, in SiteCAD. So it's quite it's quite um, quite useful in a sense. Let's head over back to integrated 3D structures. We can have a look here at um, the uh, where is it? A list of integrated 3D structures. Now, the list of integrated 3D structures, what it basically tells me is it gives me um, all the structures that are present within um, uh, within my program, and it gives me, of course, a little uh, view of each. So you can see this is the initial um, uh, roofing frame that we introduced, and, of course, also the bar that I introduced. I can edit within the list of 3D structures panel. I can come over here to edit. And, again, the um, uh, site 3D um, pop-up opens, and then now I'm able to use Site 3D uh, for my uh, for my structure. So quite a nifty tool to move back and forth between uh, uh, between solutions uh, when we're looking at either amending our RCC structures or again amending our steel structures as well. Yeah. Um, of course, what I wanted to show as well uh, was the connection information. So we can come over here and look at all the different uh, connections. So I can see the position, the elevation, and the uh, absolute level as well. Upon moving over as well, I can um, uh, view the, uh, the different uh, information for my uh, steel structure on the top as well. So all the different nodes that I've introduced, I'm able to obtain um, uh, connection information from those particular nodes. Now, uh, what I want to do now is basically, so I've, so I've demonstrated, uh, and this is the sort of pivotal uh, thing that I want to demonstrate in this webinar, is the sort of uh, interoperability between our, our steel structures uh, solution and our RCC uh, uh, solution, and how both of them work together to um, uh, deliver the final project. So you can see here my... Uh, my SiteCAD RCC structure that I, uh, that, I, that I made just prior, and I brought in my steel structures uh, project within uh, SiteCAD. Now, you might be asking about loads. Now, of course, when we're dealing with um, uh, loads, uh, so upon creating a new, uh, uh, a new structure, a new steel structure in SiteCAD, those live load, uh, sorry, those um, those loads will not be uh, will not be transferred. You'd have to do it manually and come over here. So again, so if I come down um, down a level, 
this particular um, this particular bar that I've defined, um, this particular steel bar that I've defined, those loads will not be uh, will not be transposed onto the structure. So uh, the load will only be transposed to the structure if you're coming from Site 3D, you've generated your loads and you've brought it in uh, uh, to the structure, and then those reactions will all, um, of course, the uh, the program will take care of it. If you're creating new structures, integrated 3D structures from Site CAD, those loads will not be taken into account. We'd have to come over here to loads and introduce the loads manually um, uh, as a point load um, or a surface load, depending on the structure that you have. Um, and of course, all those new additional load cases will have to be defined as well. So uh, that's 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 not really a uh, a large issue. It's quite if, if you guys are um, know what you guys are doing, then it's quite uh, quite an easy thing to uh, get across. Let's um let's open up um uh, uh, let's open up a uh, example project that I have. Now this is an example project that my colleague has uh, created. And we can now view um, some extra potential when we look at stairs, etc. Now, of course, let's conduct a three D view. <clears throat> so this is our uh, our structure. Now, um, you guys might think that there is no steel structure here, but actually, uh, the stairs uh, are steel stairs. So they're steel frame stairs, and um, we've integrated those into our RCC structure here. So let's exit. We can have a look. We can come over here again to uh, steel structures. This is the, the button that uh, uh, the, uh, this is where the party's at when we're dealing with interoperability with uh, with steel structures, the integrated 3D structures here. And you can come over here to list integrated 3D structures, and you can see here my stairs um, that have been defined within um, uh, within Site 3D and brought into our uh, our structure. So. When, uh, why does this? Uh, why is this so powerful? Well, it's powerful for a few reasons. The first reason here is that you're able to um, amend changes that you've made prior in a one-size-fits-all model. So you can see um, the, uh, the project here. Um, I can make appropriate changes to my RCC model and my uh, steel structures model within. Um, uh, 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 within uh, SideCAD, so all instantaneously. So I don't have to go back into, oh, like I did, um, I don't have to go back into Site3D and make those changes um, uh, if I don't want to. So they're quite um, cosmetic changes. I can make those changes here as well. So I'm going to come over here. You can see all the different um, structures that I've made. I'm able to edit structure and uh, be able to go into the exact same page that I had prior. Um, uh, within the 3D structures. As such. So what does this mean? I'm able to edit multiple structures. I have the, the 2D view and the 3D view as well. So let's exit now. And there will be some also uh, what I wanted to touch on is that when we're dealing with those uh, live and dead loads, those um, uh, those loads generated by our 3D structures, um, we're also able to uh, bring those in manually if we want to. So if we don't want to bring in the loads uh, prior to starting the program, we have the option to create those additional load cases. And upon those additional load cases, we can bring in um, uh, the different structures that we want to. Now. Um, that was a little demonstration that I've done uh, in terms of interoperability with RCC and steel structures. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, 
uh, take some questions. So if you guys have any questions, and I'm going to show some example projects that we've uh, that we've created using both uh, RCC and um, our, uh, our our Site three D solutions uh, within our program. So we can come over here to those um, structures. Now this is all saved on the BIM Server Center. You can see I have the metallic hotel that I've opened. I have some uh, open already. Um, so you can see here these uh, these structures. This is a quite a nice structure that we can uh, demonstrate the potential here. We've created our um, a, 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 a arena. Um, now you can see my steel structure uh, that I've created in Site 3D. And also my uh, uh, my reinforced concrete structure that um, that, uh, that bears the loads of my uh, steel structure, and so you can see the sort of connection being made not only with stairs, not only with dome, but also with the small things that we need, so tie tie bars, etc. All those can be done uh, internally with our uh, SideCAD and Side Three D interoperability. So quite a nifty tool for. Um, uh, uh, using these uh, these projects, and of course, um, we don't have two models. Uh, we have one model, so we have just the structural model. I don't have the three D, uh, the site three D structure and the uh, site CAD structure. I have one model that I've uh, 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 demonstrated together. Now. Um, let's have a look at some other projects as well. So this is the um, this is the Uru Tower, and there's a uh, a, a, a project that we've demonstrated as well. Okay, so we've got a question here from Suman uh, Polikonda. Sorry if I um, said your name incorrectly, I apologize. Um, how to insert escalators in our RCC structure? Please explain in software, sir. Um, so escalators, um, we would have to create openings within uh, our slab. So um, we can come over here to, I guess we can come over here to my foundation level. Oh, sorry, no, foundation for okay. So, uh, Suman, you'd have to introduce openings uh, within your slab. So, coming over into slab, uh, introduce openings here. And I have a few options here. So, I can introduce a rectangle opening parallel to a beam. I can introduce rectangle openings with zero angles, introduce rectangle opening matching with the, with the panel angle, and also introduce rectangle opening with any angle. Now, this, uh, this option here depends on where your Escalator is positioned in your model. So I'm coming over here parallel to a beam. Oh no, not parallel to a beam. I think I went on just with zero angle. So I can come over here. Oh, okay. So So you can see here that I've created an opening within my slab. And this opening, you can uh, uh, dimension it to your dimensions of your um, of your escalator structure. We can consult the 3D view to see uh, that opening. I hope that answered your question, Sunan. Uh, the questions are still coming in. We don't have that many. So you can see here the opening uh, of, my, uh, of my slab to make room for my uh, elevator structure. Okay, now um, the connection to someone we can have a look at that. No worries. So coming over to our uh, top level. Now, uh, Vishwanath asked whether um, we can have uh, new connection designs. Now, uh, 
I can you can see here the, the new connection tab here. I can delete connections as well. I can move and I'll look, obtain connection information. I can create new connections upon selecting um, here, and I can of course select the new connection that I want uh, uh, on the particular either the particular RCC structure or my uh, or my steel structure as well. And you can see that that connection has been made. I can of course um, uh, change the different group if I want. So we were on the uh, first floor, we can come over to the second. Also, no, uh, change group. Over to the first, I think it was. Yep. And then uh, select our uh, second positioning for our, our connection uh, design. Then add connections. And you can see here now that that new connection has been generated and I can now uh, play around with the interoperability with the RCC structure. So I can create a new bar, look at joints, nodes, etc., cetera, um, on the particular section here. So I hope that answered your question, uh, Vishwanaj. Let's have a again look at our uh, arena structure. This is what I wanted to show as well. Um, uh, a quite a nifty tool. Now, within my structural uh, model, now not only do I have the structural model, but of course I have the different analysis that's been done um, uh, with that arena structure. So you can see here, um, I can have a look so you can see all the different uh, structures that are made. Um, I can also view some animations within um, BIM Service Center. Now there are, I do have some, some issues uh, with the internet, so I hope um, okay, so we can turn uh, the analytical model off. We can turn the deformed shape. Just look at the software. And you can see here, you can view it. Maybe I'll open up the 3D, uh, the 3D view larger. Let's go into full screen to actually demonstrate the capabilities we have here. Now just bear with me, sorry about this, uh, about the uh, internet. It, it does seem to be going okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, it was horrible because I couldn't load any uh, example projects, um, and that's sort of what we like to um, uh, to show the viewers is sort of the example um, projects that we have. Okay, so coming up again to our structure model, so we can turn all these off. So let's have a look at our deformed shape. So you can see here that I'm able to uh, view my 3D, uh, my steel structure, um, the form shape in BIM Service Center as well. So upon uh, analyzing my project, um, I can save that animation and then it can be um, viewed later on. So quite a nifty tool um, for, uh, or it could be anything, but presenting to stakeholders, um, uh, looking again, looking at the deformed shape uh, inside your uh, Internet Explorer as well. So quite a nifty tool here. Um, okay, perfect. Now, um, we're going to Let's have a look here. If there's any other questions? Uh, how can we download? Now, um, how can you uh, obtain Site3D and uh, SiteCAD? How can you obtain those projects? Now, uh, you can, of course, obtain them by um, looking at our website, so at site.com, and you can view uh, all the different um, uh, options we have by looking at the packages, et cetera, uh, tailored to your, uh, your needs. You can bring those into your, uh, to your workflow. But then, of course, if you just wanted to have a look, I'd highly suggest you guys go into BIM Service Center, Center, make an account um, and actually uh, play around with it uh, 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 before um, looking at 
the different options for uh, purchasing, etc. So, um, yeah, that's totally fine. But of course, I'm sure uh, some of our, our sales reps are more than happy to guide you guys um, into uh, a solution that's that's right for you guys. No worries. That's, that, that's totally fine. Um, now, we have some questions that are, uh, no, uh, Nudge, there is some, there, that is a uh, technical question. I'm not exactly too sure I understand what your question is, to be honest. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, address that question uh, after the webinar. Um, and then, of course, if I can't, then we'll um, uh, uh, refer you on to our technical support team. Uh, I hope that's fine. All right, guys, perfect. Um, we're just going to leave it at that. Um, if you guys want this webinar, if you guys want to uh, obtain it, just shoot me a message and I'll uh, and I'll send it to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the webinar. Uh, I hope you guys are staying stay safe as well uh, in these uncertain times. I hope soon, uh, within uh, the next few months, we'll return back to normal. Um, we've also been affected as well, so uh, everyone's in the same boat. Um, but then again, uh, this provides ample time for us to uh, practice on our uh, on our uh, on our structural. Uh, models uh, in uh, using SIP. So uh, there's uh, there's no better time to uh, get learning. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. See ya.